Hello, and welcome to the MATLAB part of this online module. I will be covering different plotting functions using MATLAB, such as plot, MHSC, serve. Um, in order for you to, to have an access to plot your different types of data in different ways, and how to manipulate the, the way the data is shown, so such as change the axes, change the labels of your uh, axes, uh, X and Y, and change the title, change the fonts, and how to make the graph look representable. So, let us start with uh, defining a variable that will be plotting. It's called x to be magic a hundred. So just a magic hundred by hundred matrix. Okay? And so in order to plot it, we simply use figure and plot and x and let's see just our first row. Just, let's make it a simple one, one line graph. Okay. And here's our uh, our data show. So if you you would be uh, showing this figure in a in a tutorial or presenting as a data set, there's a lot of problems with it. You know, I mean, first of all, axes are not labeled. You don't know what you're looking at. Um, secondly, in a large auditorium, this would uh, be the axes would be actually too small, and that's what I just found from my own experience. Um, so let us change the the figure to be more representative. So you can do this uh, using the graphic user interface for MATLAB by going to Edit and going to Access Property. Okay. So a, a window will change, basically giving you access to the access to the axes property. So let us obviously first of all write a label of our axis. So uh, our x axis is selected here, and let's write let's say to be time in seconds. And let's change our y axis to be say current in milliamps. Okay? So let's never forget the units. Also from this view what you can alter is the range of your axis to be shown. So we can set what I say to be from 5,000 to 10,000, etc. And it can also change how your axis to be, whether they should be linear or logarithmic. Okay? That's, that's very good to know. Um, so let's input our title to be, let's say, current over time. And yes, so what we should do now is change the size of our labels. And you do that by double clicking on, on the label you want to change. So, so if we click on our x axis label here, you'll be prompted to a different window. And to change the font size, so like here, and let's go for 16. I find it uh, 16 to be as a, used as a rule of thumb in many cases. Um, another thing is useful to uh, alter to your X labels is basically to your axis labels is to make them in bold to also stand out a bit more from the rest of the figure. Uh, let's do exactly the same thing for the Y axis. So let's change it to 16 and change it to bold. And let's alter our title to be 20, because you want our titles to be large than our axis size. And let's make it more visible. So now there's, we, we altered the axis labels. However, uh, our the actual numbers that we represented are now under row compared to the sizes of the labels. So in order to alter them, click on, on your figure. And you select, go to font uh, tab here. And you can increase the size of your axis uh, numbers as well. Trigger. So let's make it 16 to match exactly the same. So for example, if you be presenting this already, it's much better initially uh, produced. Another thing to include in a graph is legend, and you can find it here, insert legend uh, button, and you can move it around and see so it would not overlap the data. And you can once again double click on this to change what uh, your data is showing, so let's see, blocks. And here we go. So now the, the figure is much more representable. Also, if you want to change the way the lines are shown, so for example, make them thicker or change the color, you would click on the lines on your data. And on the right hand side here, you can change the way your data is shown. So for example, you can change the style, so whether it's solid line or, or dotted or etc. And of course, also change the line thickness. Um, I usually found that as a rule of thumb, it's good to keep the line with that too. Low. Um, I mean, once again, it depends what, what you're showing. Model. And you can change the color here to red, black, or so. Um, avoid using any bright colors like yellow. 
because in many cases, uh, with horror projectors, you would not be able to, to visualize them. You would not be able to see them. Okay. So now let us let me show you how to do all these manipulations in a command line. So let us close the window. And let us plot our figure again. So let's just plot it again. That's the way it was originally. So first thing to change is uh, to include our labels for the axis. You do that by writing X label for the X axis label. And you would write uh, time S like this. And that's a string basically that's going to be written on your axis. So if we close this. And if we check our figure again, you see that uh, our X label has appeared. Now, if you want to change the font size, if you go up, you would have to write comma after the label and write which parameter you want to change. So we want to change font size and comma and change to what? So uh, by standard, it's 10. So let's make it to 16 as we did before. And if you go back to our figure, you see that our X axis label has uh, been set to font size 16. If you want to include a bold, you would add a parameter for font weight. And you would make it bold. You can be for bold, I for italic, etc. Okay. And now our X uh, label is set as we want it to be. Uh, size 16, it's in bold and written what you want it to have. Uh, to do exactly the same thing for Y axis, you just change for it to be Y label rather than uh, X. And let us change the name to the current in the layout. Okay. And exactly the same font size 16 and font weight in bold. Now, if we go back to our figure, you see our Y uh, axis label has appeared. Uh, the third thing we included was a title. And the, fun the command for title it is just title. And in exactly the same way, we write cover current over time. Um, and we make our font size to be 20. And we make our font to be um, in bold. Okay. If you go back to our figure, you see that the title has appeared as well. Now, if you want to change the font size of our axes themselves, or, or the numbers that we just shown, you use a function called set, GSA for the current figure, and then you can change the parameters you want. So th in this case, it would be font size and change it to 16. Okay. And as you can see, the numbers have now appeared much larger. Um, the final thing to include is a legend, and the command for that is legend. And you would just write legend and flux and close. Okay. Here we go. Now our data is much uh, better represented than originally. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is how to plot multiple uh, data sets on the same plot. So let's create multiple var variables for this. So let's call our x1 to be 1 to 10. And let's say our y1 is going to be equal x1 times 2. Our y2 is going to be x1 times 5. And our y3 is going to be x1 times 10. So let's just keep it simple with the straight lines. So now, if you want to plot all y1, y3, y2, and y3 on plot, you would do uh, right figure. And it's it's important to, I find it's important to use the figure for every single plot uh, every time, the command figure. Because otherwise, you might have your plot uh, overlapping with the previously uh, plotted data. And you really don't want to lose that. So a figure basically just creates the, an empty figure uh, for whatever you're going to be plotting next. So. We're coming back to plotting multiple data sets. So you would write plot, and you would write x, x axis and y axis, the data uh, for one of the data sets. Then you would have to exactly repeat the same uh, for the second one and for the third one. So x1, y3. You always have to define both x and y, x and y, x and y. Okay. Now, if you run this, you see all three of our data sets being plotted on our graph. Okay, and now you would do the manipulations on your x and y axis and titles in exactly the same way or in the command line. Um, now, let's say, what if you want to change the uh, 
uh, your, one of the axes to be logarithmic. Because, for example, let's see our y4 is equal to x1 times 500. Okay? And so now, if we would plot our x1, y4, additional four function here, we would see that our y4 data is completely overwhelming, overwhelming uh, the other three. So, if you want to change the y-axis, you can do that through the axis properties in, in using the graphic user interface. However, in the command line, in this case, we would change our function not to be plot, but semi-log. So, if I go back up, and if I change it, instead of plot, semi-log, and you can change our your either x-axis to be semi-log or y-axis to be semi-log. Okay? So, say y, semi-log y, and plot it again. You can see that um, the y-axis has been changed to logarithmic, about x-axis still kept the same. And this allows you to visualize multiple uh, orders of back. Okay, let us move now to plotting two-dimensional uh, data, or matrices. Um, for that, uh, I found a uh, most commonly used command is called image sc. And image sc is better uh, to image because it straight away adjusts the color bar to be fitting uh, the data. And so let me just demonstrate. So if you write figure and image sc, image, sorry, image our x, which is our 100 by 100 matrix, we'll get a view like this. So if you see the color bar, basically all the data points are above the limit. However, if we would include sc, which goes to scale, I believe, our uh, color bar axis is straight away adjusted uh, looking into the uh, the bin values on, on your data. So our x and y axis uh, are the rows and columns and the colors representing are the values of the matrix. Okay? Um, and once again, the same exactly exact commands like x-label, y-label, etc. are used to manipulate uh, your graph. Um, but so I find image to see to be very useful to uh, visualizing your two-dimensional uh, matrix. So if you want to include the color bar uh, using a, the user interface, you would click here, as I showed before. It's a color bar function. However, if you want to use a command line for that, it's called color bar. The way. So as you can see, it includes the color bar. And if you want to adjust the values of your color bar axis, you would write c-axis for the color bar axis, and you write the vector for uh, what vector to be so the, bin, the x bin and the y bin. If you know. So let's let's make it say five thousand to ten thousand. So cut it by half. And as you can see, the range of our colors has been changed, and now our things under five thousand is changed to. Okay, and a final uh, function I want to show is called serve. And it's used for plotting surfaces, so for uh, to representing uh, data in a three-dimensional way. And let, let me just show you how it works. So if I write figure and surf of x, surface of our x function, you can see that our data now is represented in three-dimensional way. So we also have our z-axis included here. Now, with the three-dimensional data, besides all the usual manipulations, you also want to uh, change the angle, the way you view it. Because, for example, in this, let's, let's say in this way, I would not be able to comprehend my data too well. But by changing it, I have a much clearer picture. Okay. And so you would do the, in the graphic, graphic user interface using the Rotate 3D button right here in the toolbar. However, if you want to set the, the specific value every single time it's plotted, you would add view and the angles for your um, X projection or Y projection. So let's say if you make it 10 and 80, you can see the angle has been changed to be 10 and 80 in this way. So this is the end of the MATLAB part of the online module. In this part, I've covered uh, the most commonly used functions I find uh, to plot various types of data, uh, how to plot uh, multiple data sets on the same plot function, uh, how to adjust your axes, labels, and sizes, and how to represent, so how to make your figure uh, representable in conferences and so on, or uh, for publications. I hope you found this um, this part of the module useful, and good luck in your future. You select the data points on your figure, and go to Analysis tab here. 
fitting. And here you can select what are the different methods you want to fit the data, whether it's linear, polynomial, curve, exponential, etc. Since 